Hey everyone, it's Dr. Ryan, the Productivity Doc, with healthcare tips and tricks to help healthcare professionals get done their day sooner, avoid burnout, and make more time for the important things in life. Now, my recommendations are for healthcare providers, but I'm hoping that other people may be able to find some use in some of these tips and tricks too. But it's going to be primarily focused on doctors, nurses, things that can help dietitians, physiotherapists, other things too. So if you find this useful, go ahead and hit that like button down below. Uh, subscribe if you want to have more um, tips and tricks coming to you. And uh, comment down below if there's something that you want me to talk about in the future. So I've already talked to on a couple of videos about um, time management. And, um, you know, so I figured that uh, another important aspect of productivity and sort of staying on time and enjoying your job is energy management. Um, and there's always the, the usual um, suggestions in terms of energy management, you know, make sure that you're getting enough sleep, making sure that you're eating well, making sure that you're exercising. These things are often easier said than done, but I always tell people, you want to start low, you want to go slow, build your way up to a regular habit of these things. And uh, once you get into the habit of doing things, it's often hard to stop and uh, you find a lot of benefit from it. So I do hi highly recommend that. So what was my problem? Um, I had two problems in terms of energy management. Um, I would find that I would get to the end of the day and no matter how high energy I was going, you know, getting things done, I would hit a point, you know, usually around four o'clock, five, where my energy would just crash. And it just, the rest of the day became a slog. And though technically I was supposed to have my day done at about five o'clock, more often than not, it's five thirty, six. I found it hard to sometimes get done before 6.30 on some days, uh, which was not a really great situation. The other thing was that I would find that often my mem my energy level would crash well before um well before lunchtime um not so much the energy level but i would get very irritable right so if things didn't go completely smoothly like you know you'd have people coming in with like six things and they give you a hard time about it or you have that uh, that doorknob oh by the way doc i've been having chest pain i find myself getting very, very anxious and wondering, oh, am I even going to have time to eat my lunch, right? Um, so, you know, this is a real problem for me. So I had to do a little bit of investigation into it. And I found out that sort of the, uh, the productivity Bible on energy management specifically is a book called The Power of Full Engagement. And I gave this book a read and I, I really did find it quite helpful. The authors of the book were um, uh, a couple of uh, people who studied energy management, especially in high-performing individuals, especially in athletes. And um, they especially studied tennis players, and they found that there are two groups of athletes or performers in any sort of um, groups of high-performing individuals. And although they often started off with sort of equivalent uh, skill sets and intelligence or physical abilities, they found that one group did really quite well, went on to perform at top tier, and the other group never quite reached their full potential. The example that they give in this is the difference between Andre Agassi being someone who was able to achieve their full potential and, and John McEnroe, who was never quite able to perform. Uh, reaches full potential and you know would often have blow ups and I think he's well known for getting very angry and smashing his uh, smashing his tennis racket so they looked at these people and and they said you know what's the difference between these two people and they found one difference was that the second group that never quite reached their whole potential they often tried to push through right if they had you know a four hour match day or an eight hour match day they wouldn't take breaks. They would just push through full force the whole time. And the first group, the group that was successful, would take short breaks periodically. Usually about every 90 minutes is what's recommended. And they would take a short little five minute break and just relax and just sit down, relax their muscles, maybe listen to some music, do things to get them to a low positive state, nice and calm. And then they would go back and they would play full force for another 90 minutes. And so I started instituting this into my day. So my day starts at about nine o'clock seeing patients. So I'd see patients, work really quick, you know, get everything done. 10.30, 
I take a five minute break. I listen to a calming music on YouTube that has a little bit of energy to it too. Um, and I just fill up the whole screen with this music video, nothing medical there. I have a snack of 12 baby carrots um, to refill my energy levels. And uh, I just relax for a little bit, right? I, again, in the afternoon, I do the same thing. I start at 1.30 seeing patients, three o'clock, I take a short break have a bagel with some um, peanut butter on it, brown bread. So it's a serving of, uh, of meat there. And, um, and then at 4.30, I have a little bit of coffee and I have um, an orange as well too. So and this does two things, right? It gives you a little bit of downtime, but it also refills your fuel. So I get a little bit of food in my, my stomach. I don't get as anxious just before lunch if something complicated comes in because I've already had something to eat. So I'm not as hangry as I would have been before. So I do find that that's really quite helpful. The other thing that they talk about in the book is a lot of the times when you're just grinding and you're slogging through things, it's hard to remember the important things, why you're doing what you're doing. Um, in, in, our, in the case of my own personal case and for a lot of other family doctors, I think we have to remember that um, what we're doing, although a lot of times it just feels like you're just putting out fires at the very least, you know, you're helping people with people's health and you're helping to keep them out of the ER. You look at the places where the family doc level has really, really gone down and the ERs are filled with people who, you know, really should be at their family docs, right? They've got mild colds, maybe their toe hurts or their knee hurts. Maybe they're just there for medication renewal, you know, and if you're there and, and you're carrying on, you're keeping those people out of the ER so the ER can focus on the truly sick people, which is very important. So that's one thing that's really helpful. Sometimes, uh, you know, putting putting aside some extra time, I have um, sheets from um, a book called Atomic Habits, which just, it's, it's basically a cheat sheet that the author makes available to everyone. And I often hand them out to people and say, hey, you know, look at this. If you got some bad habits you wanna break or some good habits that you wanna develop, um, look at this cheat sheet. And if you find value from that, pick up the book. It's an excellent book uh, about uh, building up habits and breaking bad habits. And I highly recommend it as well too. It's by James Clear. Um, some of you guys might find some benefit from it as well too. Other things that I find really, so for me, oftentimes, and I don't always remember to do this, but oftentimes, you know, before I start my day, I might say, hey, you know, the reason why I'm here it's to help people out, right? Help them uh, improve their health, help them develop good health habits, um, and sort of reframe it instead of just, you know, running around like a chicken with your head cut off, uh, putting out fires and whatnot. So, so I find that that's helpful sometimes too. So taking breaks every 90 minutes and reframing why you're there uh, are both things that are really quite helpful. The other thing that, I, that I've done pretty much since the beginning of my career, which I find is really quite beneficial is after I'm done my day, and this doesn't work for everyone, but I go for a hour long jog or some other, you know, uh, a uh, sort of a bike on my exercise bike. And I find that this really just helps you sort of drain off the, you know, the negative energy from the day. I take a shower, no matter how bad my day is, um, I, I feel a lot better after I've done that. And I can't say I've ever regretted going for a jog after my day. So I really do find those techniques to be really quite beneficial for my own energy management and sort of keeping me going. Hopefully you guys can find some value in this video. Um, if I could give you one tip uh, for things, maybe try to work a short five minute, 90 minute break into your day, pick out some YouTube uh, songs that you can listen to every day when you do that and um, sort of try it for a week or two and see if it helps you out. Hopefully it does. If it does, comment down below, let me know. The other thing that I find helpful too, um, that, uh, you know, and I usually am not a big fan of multitasking, but um, I do recommend this, especially when you are out jogging, uh, if you're in a place where you don't have to worry about cars and whatnot, uh, is listening to podcasts or audiobooks or even just music while you're, while you're jogging. I, I think I've mentioned before in an earlier video that I've actually gone through hundreds of hours of productivity podcasts and pro productivity books, and I'm not making that up. This has been over the years. This has been basically listening to these podcasts while I'm out, out jogging or doing dishes or driving long distances. So although I don't usually recommend multitasking, if you have a low level cognitive job, 
then you can you can listen to something while you're doing that and uh, kill two birds with one stone. So anyway, I hope that this was helpful for you. If it was, like down below so more people can get the message. Comment down below if there's any video ideas that you'd like to see me discuss or if you have any questions or if you just don't like something that I'm doing let me know. Um, and if you want more tips and tricks that will hopefully help you out with your practice, then subscribe down below. All right. Have a good one. And uh, hopefully this is helpful. Talk to you later.